Welcome to the Casual Birder podcast. I'm Susie Buttress. As a casual birder, I take time to watch birds as I go about my daily tasks. In my show, I'll tell you about the wild birds I've seen, speak with other enthusiasts, take bird walks, and share stories from listeners around the world. In episode 83, I look back at my best bird memories from 2020 and hear about yours too. I also look forward to the possibilities of the birding year ahead. But first, I want to say how much I appreciate you all for listening to the show. Thank you to those who've been sharing the Casual Birder podcast on social media and by word of mouth. It really helps the show grow. If you find value in what I do and you'd like to help support the show's production, you can buy me a virtual coffee at ko-fi.com. The link is in the show notes. An absolutely massive thank you to Steph, Paul and my two anonymous donors for buying me coffee since the last episode. 2020 was a hard year for so many of us, but there were moments of birding joy which provided good memories to look back on. For the majority of the year, I stayed home, venturing out only to very local spots. When permitted by relaxation in the pandemic restrictions, we took two breaks away, to the Isle of Wight in October and to Norfolk in December. On both vacations, I watched birds pretty much just from the gardens of the rental accommodation, with occasional walks in the countryside. At the beginning of the year, I had made a resolution to record my sightings regularly on eBird, and I didn't do too badly, logging a total of 172 checklists. I saw 162 species during the year, which surprised me when I saw the total, and this number was definitely boosted by the variety of birds seen in our holiday locations. I also saw six lifers, birds I'd never knowingly seen before and which were added to my life list. These were goosander, which is also known as a common merganser in America, the stock dove, ring oozel, black-tailed godwit, common crane and greater white-fronted goose. I only managed a couple of bird-watching day trips out during the year. In January, I visited Blashford Lakes Nature Reserve near Ringwood in Hampshire, England. I was meant to be on the visit with my local RSPB group, but I left home a little late and missed the start of the walk. Although I intended meeting up with everyone, it was such a beautiful day and there were so many birds singing that I got distracted and ended up spending ages just walking slowly along, looking for birds and listening to the beautiful birds song. Highlights of the day were finding a big flock of siskins, seeing a goosander pair, my first lifer of the year, filming a chance sighting of a Chetty's warbler, and, at sunset, watching a distant murmuration of European starlings from the viewing platform. I'd never seen a murmuration before, and although I was told it was one of the smaller ones, it was a truly mesmerising natural sight. At the end of January, I visited Fleet Pond with a co-worker and his son. Despite it being relatively close to where I live, I'd never been there before. For a small area close to housing, it has a nice variety of habitats. The pond, well, lake really, is bordered by woods and some heathland. I was very pleased to see a small flock of redwing there, my only sighting of the year, along with nuthatch, tree creeper and greater spotted woodpecker, all woodland favourites of mine. From March through to the end of the year, our lives were impacted by the various lockdowns and restrictions due to the pandemic. I was fortunate to be able to remain at home and my garden birds became my main gateway to the natural world. I had some vague notions of sprucing up my garden, which had been left to do its own thing for a few years and possibly making it into more of a wildlife garden. But in the end, I just enjoyed sitting out with my garden birds getting used to me being there and carrying on their lives around me. Thanks to Paul Fenwick in the show's Facebook group, I recently learned that I can easily explore eBird for the species recording in my garden or my local patch and see any patterns in their presence. In time, the records will build up to show me the times of year I might expect to see certain birds based on my previous sightings. In 2020, I saw 33 species either in or from my garden. The only new species to the garden that I saw last year was the lesser black-backed gull mentioned in a previous episode but all the other birds seen were either regulars or expected species. Lockdown meant that we discovered nearby areas for walking and birdwatching that we might not have found otherwise. A local nature reserve, Old Down Park, 
provided open views of the chalk downs, as well as a narrow strip of ancient woodland. On one of these walks, I got my second lifer of the year, the stock dove. I didn't see the bird, and I was only able to identify it from the call, which was different to other dove or pigeon calls that I'd heard before. A recording of the call, and help from birdnet and zenocanto.org, helped me confirm my suspicions of the stock dove. On another walk, we saw three yellow hammers, a species I didn't realise we had nearby, and one that I've only seen a few times in my life. In March, I took part in the Global Women's Big Day, and although we were in lockdown, I took a walk around my local area to spot the birds seen in an urban environment. No big surprises on that walk, but I did see two common buzzards flying over and a small flock of house sparrows chirping and chilling out in the afternoon sun. Much of the summer months were spent watching my garden birds. It was particularly enjoyable to be able to sit outside in the sunny weather and watch the juvenile birds wandering around the garden. Throughout this time, I was very pleased to receive regular visits from my rook friend. Having such a large bird visit for treats was wonderful, and being such a large bird, it encouraged smaller ones to stay around when I opened the back door, and for a while a blackbird and robin also looked out for the treats I shared. I had a new species for the garden in July, with a surprise visit from a lesser black bat gull that landed without warning one day and didn't seem to be able to get out of the garden. I eventually helped it to get out, and you can hear more in episode 77 and in the blog on my website. With the easing of pandemic restrictions in the summer, we booked three trips away, to the Isle of Wight in October, the Somerset Levels in November, and Norfolk over Christmas. We chose these locations to provide us with a variety of birds not seen at home, and to give us some access to coasts for my husband's photography. We had a fabulous 10-day break in the Isle of Wight, with some very casual bird watching, mostly from the garden of the accommodation we were staying in. During the trip, I met up with past guest Kieran Lee Vine for a socially distanced bird walk. Kieran is the only person I've met socially in person since March, so my thanks to him for taking the time to show me one of his favourite spots. We had a great morning birding, seeing 27 species, including four different raptors during the session, a peregrine, kestrel, buzzard and sparrowhawk. The trip to the Isle of Wight brought me two lifers as well, a ring oozel, a type of thrush, and a black-tailed godwit, a wader which I've probably seen before but I hadn't ever properly identified. My last day on the Isle of Wight was spent taking part in the Global Bird Weekend. I was so honoured that the Casual Birder podcast put forward a team to participate in this inaugural event. Our team consisted of listeners from three continents of all experience levels and we saw 324 species over the weekend, with 304 of them reported on the October Big Day. We also raised £402 for BirdLife International. In November, we looked forward to a break on the Somerset levels, but plans changed with another lockdown and the break was cancelled. I hope we're able to take that trip in the future. However, November did bring me my first ever experience of hearing birds, red wings in this case, on nocturnal migration, as mentioned in the last episode. And finally, in December, we spent a week out of a planned 10 days near Hickling Broad in Norfolk. We were able to travel there, as although some of the regions in England had greater restrictions, both our accommodation address and our own address were at the same lower tier level. Unfortunately, while we were away, the restrictions were tightened and we had to return home. But during our time there, I had some close views of a barn owl and male hen harrier, as well as marsh harriers, a gadwall, great crested grebes, mallards and mute swans. I also got my last two lifers of the year, greater white-fronted goose and distant but unmistakable views of common crane. With the greater white-fronted goose, I could hear that they sounded different to the grey leg geese and I managed to get some video of them. Stripping the audio out and uploading to BirdNet, I was able to identify them as a new bird for me. Here's an example of the grey lag geese that were flying over. And followed by the greater white fronted geese that I also recorded. I'll be happier when I've seen this species for long enough to observe their plumage rather than just seeing their silhouettes flying over. But I'm still counting them. I asked 
asked you to share your best birding memories of 2020 and some of you sent them via voice messages and speak pipe on my website and others were written in. Natasha Hadfield said, I've so many happy birding memories this year it's hard to pick out the best ones but I'll do my best. 1. Going up to the Cairngorms to see crested tits and snow buntings and having cold tits take mealworms from my hand. 2. Being lucky enough to travel to Finland and Norway not long before lockdown. Highlights included pine grosbeak, lesser spotted woodpecker, willow tit, Siberian jay, Siberian tit, common, stella and king ida, long-tailed duck and fantastic views of a northern hawk owl. 3. The day a sparrowhawk turned up at the bird feeder outside my office. 4. Getting to know a local patch with my after-work walks in the summer with the most exciting sighting being a juvenile cuckoo. 5. A couple of tantalising glimpses of bearded tits, though I'm still sad because of restrictions I was never able to go back and visit the best place for them, local to where I used to live. 6. Once restrictions lifted a little, being able to go on a walk on the north side of town where I was working and find two juvenile long-eared owls. 7. Going on a boat trip to Nos, a large gannet colony, and being surrounded by diving gannets and great skewers. 8. Seeing a few rarities, such as glossy ibis and a black pole warbler, since moving to Shetland, although really I still get the most pleasure from going on a walk and seeing what I find, and particularly the discoveries I made on my old patch. 9. Watching fulmers, particularly as they're still around during the winter, when other seabirds, such as the great Antarctic skewer and common Antarctic tern, have gone. Thanks so much for that, Natasha. Quite a few of those are memories I'd like to have for myself in future years. Hello, this is John from Hampshire. Um, I just thought I'd provide you with a few of my uh, birding memories from 2020. Uh, Not surprisingly, uh, given that I'm Susie's husband, a lot of my uh, best birding moments are probably going to be the same as Susie's. But I guess my personal highlights have been uh, the, the ring oozle that we saw on the Isle of Wight. Uh, I've wanted to see a ring oozle for a very long time, ever since as a young boy um, I saw a picture of, uh, of a ring oozle in a, in a bird watching book. So that was, a, that was fantastic to finally see a, a ring oozle in real life. Uh, another highlight was uh, on our trip to Norfolk, um, having really fantastic views of a, of a male hen harrier, a really beautiful bird and not one that we've seen very often. So that was that was a real treat. An ongoing theme this year, um, having spent so much time at home, is uh, becoming very familiar with our regular rook friend. It has been a, a real highlight for me of 2020. Uh, one of the other things of note this year, because of the restrictions with travel, it's encouraged us to get out and discover some local nature reserves. So we've discovered RSPB Farnham Heath, which is a fabulous place, um, and some highlights there. We're seeing a, uh, a red start, which I've not seen too many times. Uh, we were eagerly looking for uh, Dartford warblers as well. I failed to see one, but uh, I know you did, Susie. Um, congratulations. Also, much closer to home, we've discovered some really nice uh, areas to explore. A place called Old Down, which is just a short walk from home, where we've had some uh, nice sightings of red kites. And also uh, on the edge of Old Down, there's an old Roman road, which I've uh, used as a running route as well this year. And on a a misty autumn day, when I went out um, on my own, actually, to to photograph the autumn colours, had a really nice encounter with a a flock of nuthatches, which I've attempted to record. Finally, I'd like to wish uh, all listeners of the Casual Bird podcast uh, a very happy and healthy 2021. Hi, Susie. It's Jessica from Victoria, Australia. I did a lot of birding this year, particularly during our second strict lockdown due to COVID. I set myself the goal of taking a photo of a new bird each day, which you kindly let me share on the podcast Facebook group. Doing that really motivated me to learn the birds around me. 
I discovered I had spotted pardalots living in my garden. They're a bird I'd hoped to see around town, and there they were on my back fence. It also motivated me to get my daily allotment of outside exercise, and I discovered red-browed finches and spiny cheat honey eaters at a great birding spot on the other side of town. Participating in the Global Birding Day as part of the podcast team, I got another lifer, which was a Pacific gull. And just yesterday, after tracking over town during lockdown trying to get photos of black swans, I found five of them on the golf course as part of my daily walk, and I rushed home and got my camera and finally got photos of these elusive black swans. I was so excited after spending hours trudging around town this year, trying to catch them and never managing. I hope everyone has a great new year full of lots of wonderful new birds. Thanks so much to John and Jessica for their memories. Ewan, the Edinburgh bird watcher, wrote, It's been a very difficult year for us, but I've had a pretty good year birding. There's too much to mention, but my best moments in 2020 have been enjoying the birds at my local patch, watching my great spotted woodpecker feeding its chick, watching house martins flying up to my house, and goldfinch and greenfinch becoming regulars to my garden feeders. Also, red wings in the garden have been fantastic to see. I've missed going out to places, but I'm thrilled that I saw a waxwing. Oh, I'm so jealous of your waxwing, Ewan. Sam Pilcher said, In my suburban garden and local nature reserve, there was nut hatch at the feeder most days, two red wings on the lawn and kingfisher. And on a trip to the Isle of Wight in October, two white-tailed eagles and a male bullfinch. Can't remember the last time I saw one. I was on the Isle of Wight in October too, Sam, and uh, I totally didn't see any white-tailed eagles. And I did look, but uh, I'm not at all envious that you saw them. Hi, I'm Mike Drew. I live in Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire in the UK. This year has been quite strange with all the COVID lockdown stuff, but it hasn't stopped me from watching birds. This year I've spent a lot of time monitoring birds in my garden and I've recorded 52 species, with some of the highlights being a spotted flycatcher, um, cuckoos singing near my bedroom window, um, and having turtle doves as well in the same tree as the cuckoo. But a new spot for me for the garden was a brambling um, sitting in one of the, the bird feeders. I've also taken part in the Global Bird Watch Challenge on the 17th of October, where I spent um, a good few hours walking around a nature reserve at Grafham Water, and I recorded 50 species of bird there. And the main highlight for me was a great northern diver, a bird that I won't actually forget. I had some really good views of it. And it's been really great seeing all the, the different types of birds and wildlife in and around my garden. And it's kind of kept me going through through the COVID lockdown. And I hope everybody else has enjoyed taking part in, in bird watching in and around their garden and local environment and parks. Mike shared recordings of both his cuckoo and turtle dove. I really hope I get to hear a cuckoo this year and a turtle dove would be a lifer for me. Jeff from Serbia wrote, I'm very fortunate living out in the sticks. It means I've been able to get out without fear of connecting with anyone. A few memorable highlights this year, but the number one spot has to go to the honey buzzard, which paid a visit to our garden on May 19th and fed for 10 minutes on a lizard, something I don't expect to see again in my lifetime. Other highlights included my best spring day at Paluvi Reservoir on the 6th of May. Not only did I add a Caspian tern and cattle egret to the site list, but I also saw my largest flock to date of 36 white-winged black terns. Just magical, and mixing with common black and whiskered terns made it a special day indeed. Hi, it's Stephanie Seymour in Ringwood, New Jersey. Um, I had many wonderful birding moments in 2020, but I think my absolute favorite that nothing could really surpass was uh, September 19th when I saw 2,221 broad wing hawks go over my yard. It shattered my yard record, my daily yard record, and um, by, by about five or six times. The largest group I had ever had was, I think, 457. So it actually, 
it literally brought me to tears like twice because I just could not believe the amount of birds going over my yard in, in such a short period of time. It was, it was incredible. Um, the largest group that day was the last group of the evening, which happened to be 401 birds that I counted. So yeah, that, that's pretty much the tops <laughs> of two of 2020 for me. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful, happy new year. Uh, better than 2020, that's for sure. Stephanie, I had to re-listen to that. 2,221 broad-winged hawks. I cannot even imagine. Absolutely stunning. Hi, Susie. It's John Brannigan from the uh, group. Um, yeah, this has been my first year started at uh, the beginning of this year. And um, living in North London, very close to the Lee Valley, which is in uh, Hertfordshire and Essex. So I think I've seen the, the normal um, range of birds and ducks in this area, but been privileged to have seen quite a few um, sort of rare ones. Number one was a Temink Stint. Number two was a Wood Sandpiper. Number three uh, was a lovely Brambling. Number four was um, a golden eye. Number five would have been male and female goosander. And number six, my favourite and uh, my best, the male smew. Hope you like what I've seen this year. I think it's been quite successful. And um, hopefully um, 2021 can be even better. That's so awesome for your first year of bird watching, John. Four of those species would be lifers for me too. I love how we both have goosanders on our list for last year. Hello, it's Karin here from Olu in Finland. And my best birding moment of 2020, well, really difficult to decide actually. But I was sat in my garden in spring and I couldn't believe that at the far end of the garden I saw this little a European robin shaped bird, but it had a blue ring around its chest, and it was a blue throat. Um, and we occasionally see them here when they're migrating. Uh, I'd never seen one, so it was a lifer for me, and it was in my garden. Uh, I'd been putting out mealworms, live ones, for the birds, and this must have attracted it because it defended the little patch of mealworms from every other bird that came by and it was chasing off chaffinches and being quite aggressive and generally very European robin-like and it was absolutely amazing to see it. I'd seen a female earlier that day which was also a lifer but then just seeing the male with its magnificent plumage was absolutely wonderful. So yeah that was that was quite a moment. And just wish you all in Casual Bird of Podcast Land a happy new year. Let's hope it's a safe and healthy one for everyone. Thank you so much for sharing that, Karin. I wonder what will turn up in your garden this year. K.H. Von Bargen said, At the true north end of California and in the foothills of the Sierra here, we have very tall cottonwood trees, 29 or 30 metres, and for four decades or more, a pair of red-shouldered hawks nest in the tops of the trees. I've named the pair Fred and Ethel, and they are very loud, agile birds, beautiful and easily spotted even in our heavily wooded area. I was in the yard today when Fred and Ethel were very loud, louder than usual, and when I looked to see the reason, there was a third red-shouldered hawk. Our regular pair was chasing the interloper, and everyone had a lot to say about the situation. It was rather like a TV programme, flapping and clawing and harassing, quite thrilling, the intruder was chased off and it left me wondering if it was a youngster looking for a mate off a new territory. I wonder what will happen next. Will there be a repeat? As an aside, it's quite cold here, truly winter, and yet the birds seem to be declaring territories, checking out nest boxes, and the males are actually singing. I don't know if it's me being more aware or if territorial behaviours start this early every year. Thank you all so much for sharing your fabulous bird sightings and birding moments with me. To round off the year, 
Members of the show's Facebook group held a week-long bird watch. We watched birds for as little or as long as we wanted, and as frequently as we wanted. Sightings were recorded on eBird, and the checklist shared with the group eBird account. 17 people took part, including me, and 327 species were seen across three continents, with 140 checklists submitted. Thanks to the following members for taking part. Jessica, Karin, Andy, Boris and Jeff. Natasha, Sean, Adam, Kieran, Mike, Laura May, Stephanie, Brandt, K.H. von Bergen, Paul and Jeremy. And an example of some of the species seen from Australia in Victoria State, Australian magpie, rainbow lorikeet and superb fairy wren. In Finland, bohemian waxwing, hooded crow and white-throated dipper. In Serbia, middle-spotted woodpecker, hawfinch and white-tailed eagle. In Hungary, Eurasian tree sparrow, Eurasian green woodpecker and common raven. In Lithuania, long-eared owl, long-tailed duck and great grey shrike. In Scotland, snow bunting, great northern diver and golden eagle. From England, barn owl, common kestrel and field fare. From the United States on the east coast, bufflehead, bald eagle, white-throated sparrow. From, I was going to say the middle of the United States, but from Ohio, red-shouldered hawk, pileated woodpecker and sandhill crane. And from the west coast of the United States, Anna's hummingbird, snow goose and western meadowlark. These are just a very small portion of the over 300 species that were seen. While it wasn't a competition, Paul and Laura May showed themselves to be the keenest birders, with over 30 checklists submitted each over the week. We also held a New Year's Day bird watch. And results from that will be in the next episode. At the time of recording, England is in lockdown number three. This is planned to go on for several weeks, and so bird watching for the start of my year is restricted to my garden birds, apart from being able to go walking for an hour a day. However, I'm going to use this time to journal about the birds I see from my garden and the behaviours and interactions. And of course, I'll share this with you. I've also challenged myself to post a bird photograph every day, along with a little bit of information about them and an anecdote. Some of the photos will be of my garden birds, but also birds I've seen on my travels. Do look out for these on my social media channels. I'll gather the photos and descriptions together into a blog once a week and put that on my website. I've signed up for the RSPB's Big Garden Bird Watch that's taking place at the end of January. Why not join me? The link is in the show notes. Taking part is free. All that's needed is that you commit to an hour of time over the weekend of the 29th to the 31st of January. Count the number of species that you see and submit the results. Don't worry if you're not yet confident in identifying the birds you see from your window. There's lots of guidance and tips on their website. Do let me know what birds you've seen recently. I love to hear about them. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook and tag me in your posts. If you'd like to share your sightings for the show, why not leave a voice message via SpeakPipe on my website? It's totally free. Find it on the contact page on my website, casualbirder.com. If you're on Facebook and would like to join us, search for the Casual Birder Facebook group. It's a very friendly group, a great place to share your bird photos and to chat about the birds you see. It is a closed group, and you will be asked a couple of very easy questions when you apply to join. These are to ensure that you are a listener to the show, and that you will abide by the group rules. Each Wednesday, I post a fun bird ID quiz on my social media channels. Do look out for that. You don't need to be an expert to identify the bird. There are always clues in my post. And people have asked whether they can use field guides to check the identification. Yes, you can. Treat it as though you've caught a glimpse of a bird in the field and then you'd use the clues that you have to identify it, which might mean checking online or in a bird guide. And that's why I give the region to help narrow it down. The exploration of the clues adds to the fun. And on Sundays, I ask you to tell me about your top five birds or bird moments that you've seen in the past week. I love hearing about them, so do join in. Visit casualbirder.com for more information about the show, including past episodes, transcripts, an ongoing process, I have to admit, photos and blog posts about my birding. Links to all of these are in the show notes. 
Make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing to the show. Subscribing is free and you can do it wherever you listen. Thank you to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeve Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. Check out their website at dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening. And I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast. Podcast.